or a diffusion, hopefully with the sound working a bit better this time. Um, massively, massively important uh, process in, in living things. Diffusion in itself is um, quite straightforward. It literally means spreading out of particles. So if you have some particles, the tendency is for them to move out, to spread out evenly. But the actual mechanism, um, the, the method and why it does it, perhaps needs a little bit of looking into. If we think of this, first of all, let's think of it in terms of being a gas. Now we know, or hopefully you remember, that we can represent um, gas by showing it as molecules that are moving around, bumping into each other, zooming around all over the place. Okay, so molecules are already moving. Molecules have got kinetic energy. They move. And we don't always realise that this is what's happening. The, the, uh, the molecules of air around you right now, for example, are moving around. They're moving pretty fast, certainly in, the, in terms of hundreds of miles an hour. Um, but we don't feel it because they're very small and they're only moving tiny, tiny distances. But they are nonetheless moving. Okay? So they already have some energy. Now, what molecules will do is it takes more energy for them to be squashed together than it does for them to be spread apart. So the tendency is that they will move from being close together to being further apart. They don't know, that they don't want to move or they don't like moving, don't use those words. They just will move. Okay, because they're moving, and they will not stop moving, they will keep going. Okay, it doesn't actually ever stop. So, the particles are going to move. Movement of particles, or molecules, from an area of high concentration. What do we mean by that? Well, if we've got a lot of molecules in one area... That's a high concentration. There's lots of them. If we've only got a couple of particles, it's a lower concentration. So particles will move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. And that's what diffusion is. Do remember, it requires no extra energy. Um, to be added. You don't have to put anything extra in. The molecules are already moving around. They already have energy. I think this is a problem sometimes people get in their head. Um, how can something happen with no energy present? Well, the energy is present. You just don't need to put any extra in. So, to give you a couple of examples where this kind of stuff will happen in biological systems, I did say it was important. Um, if you think of a leaf... Um, what's happening in a leaf is we've got a couple of things going on. We've got respiration occurring. It's a living organism, so we've got respiration, releasing energy from food, uh, which releases carbon dioxide as a waste product. So that's produced in the cells. You're producing lots of CO2 in here. It will diffuse from the area of high concentration of the leaf out of the leaf. We also, though, in the right conditions i.e. Um, light and um, heat, or, or enough temperature, we'd also have photosynthesis happening, which of course uses up carbon dioxide. So some of this CO2, for example, that's produced from respiration would just be taken back up in photosynthesis. Um, oxygen is released as a waste product. If we've got a lot of photosynthesis going on, with a lot of oxygen in there, oxygen would diffuse out. Okay. Um, Carbon dioxide can also diffuse in. So if CO2 is getting used up at a high rate, because there's a lot of photosynthesis, we'd have less CO2 in here. So we'd have a higher concentration on the outside, and it would go in. So what you've got to do with diffusion is work out all the time where is the higher concentration. It will go from a higher to a lower concentration. Um, another example from B5 is diffusion of neurotransmitter. If you remember with the neurons, when you reach the end of a neuron, it looks something like this. Um, and then on the other side, the other neuron, you have these little receptor sites. Something like that. There's my synapse, my gap. Neurotransmitter, this chemical, which is in one end of the synapse. Message comes along. 
the neurotransmitters at a high concentration here, it's at low concentration, zero concentration over here. The neurotransmitter diffuses across the gap. That's how it actually moves. Okay, so there's another specific example um, from B5. Um, yeah, one, one other thing to think about here is you can think of it as a slope. We often will refer to um, concentration gradients. And by this we mean, if you think of it as a little slope where molecules can roll down. If I put a molecule at the top of my slope, it would roll down. You wouldn't have to do anything it, with it, it would just roll down. Okay. If I had a steeper gradient, it would roll down quicker. How does this help us? Well, the gradient, the slope if you like, is telling you the difference between how high and how low the concentrations are. If we had a, a lot of molecules, they would move, they would diffuse more quickly than if we only had a few molecules. Because the difference in concentration is greater. The difference between the high and the low concentration is greater if you've got more particles.